and welcome in to another edition of Leading Edge. I'm your host, Jeff Smith. It would seem that Toledo and Lucas County the last few years have been throwing everything but the kitchen sink at one lingering problem, gun violence. There have been programs, there have been grassroots efforts, there have been a number of men tasked with leading the charge to change the narrative. And you never want to jinx it, right? But Toledo Mayor Wade Capsicavage says homicides in Toledo this year so far are down 40%. A few weeks ago, the mayor called an audible once again at the line, making a change in leadership for this effort and creating a new city office in the process, the mayor's office of neighborhood safety and engagement. And the quarterback of that effort, although I don't think he played quarterback in high school, we'll get into that. But the quarterback on that effort is joining me today on Leading Edge. We want to welcome in Malcolm Cunningham, the new director of this new office. Not quarterback, right? Definitely in your time not a quarterback. Central Catholic. Definitely not a quarterback. Not a quarterback. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Good to see you. I appreciate the moment that you're going to sit down with us here and discuss uh, this new role for you. However, in our conversations, I understand, as you said, mm -hmm. you've kind of been in the background this entire time and that's Malcolm I'll go back we've we've had a number of figureheads as I said Juwan Armour, mm -hmm. David Bush, Brian Bird, Angel Tucker all of these names and faces it seemed like a revolving door mm -hmm. right but yeah. you said I've been in the background yep bring us up to speed on what you've been doing yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I actually reached out to Juwan in 2021 when he first took on the position. I was given the go ahead from my, my manager at the time to begin connecting uh, to, to work on issues related to violence. Uh, you were they, at ProMedica at I was the time? At, I was at ProMedica at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was given the green light to begin connecting and to attempt to support those efforts. So uh, I connected with the land bank. I had begun connecting with Boston University on a project and wanted to bring Juwan into that conversation. Um, and from there, was able to join and support however I could in the background. That's really why were the, you why were you the guy of note? Why mm -hmm, why what mm -hmm. what interest field did you bring to the table? Uh, I had I had been engaged in community based mental health for a number of years. I bring a public health perspective to the approach, and I also was beginning to move into a fellowship program at Hopkins Johns Hopkins uh, University that's actually focused on violence. Um, so kind of had some of that background that was coming in, and it felt like an opportunity to provide. Uh, the support, uh, the, the perspective of a public health professional and some of that expertise. It's been a few weeks now that you've been in the position trying to get all your ducks in a row as yep. far as the office is concerned. Obviously, being named a new office, and I asked you before we came out here today, I said, did you find this or did this find you? What did, mm -hmm. What's your answer? Mm -hmm. I think, it's a, I think it's a mix of the two. It's a mix of the two. Uh, as I said, I, I had been engaged with uh, with Juwan at the very beginning, uh, and I am not in any way attempting to take credit for Juwan's work. He did amazing work to set this program up and everything else like that. I was just supporting as much as I could. Let me um, ask you this, and, and this is kind of a frank question, but was he in a position to fail because he was the first? Mm. <sighs> is that too tough? I think I just I think the work is is so difficult, and he did not have the entire framework and the entire support. Um, that I think he needed. Mm -hmm. um, I think he did not have enough staff and they were able to staff up to the right level. Um, and I think he eventually stepped away on his own accord for, for reasons that I, I think uh, were really just related to his desire to do the work without, I think, some of the challenges that come with navigating a bureaucracy. I said to you, it's human nature, we adapt as we learn, mm -hmm. and maybe this was something we're seeing. I said at the beginning, we've thrown everything in the city of Toledo except the kitchen sink mm -hmm. at this issue. So you see Juwan come in, you see the implementation of violence interrupters, yep. you see a safety director come in and be a part of it. This was not, I think people wanted this because it was such a problem. Mm -hmm. We were losing so many lives. People wanted that quick answer. They weren't getting it, yep. and it takes time time is what I'm hearing it from takes, you. It takes time. It takes time. It takes uh, efforts across the entire spectrum. It's not just policing. It's not just grassroots folks. It's also the built environment. It's also what sorts of supports we can provide for youth programming. It's all of the above. So really, in order to really address any issue at the scale that it exists, it just takes a systematic community-wide approach to address these issues. There have been naysayers to say that this is a police issue, the police should be handling it, not mm -hmm. somebody who has a background working for a nonprofit health system here in Toledo. Yep. What do you say to, how do you answer that? Uh, I would say speak to the police and ask them what they think are the factors that are most critical to helping to improve the health and well-being of communities. Um, I think 
Weed and Seed was a, was a quite popular program that occurred in the early 90s, and they continue to refer to it as a successful um, implementation that eventually petered out at some point, right? Um, they uh, are supportive of this initiative right now. The community, so, so, excuse me, the compu community support officers yeah. have been quite engaged um, in, you know, doing things in sort of a different way. We just invested a sizable amount of funding in the uh, Police Athletic League and in, um, in, in the efforts that are happening out there. So I think it's clear to the police that there are other ways to intervene other than the actual practice of policing. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that the police officers, nearly to a person, would say it isn't just a policing effort. I, I, I've had conversations with the mayor over the last few weeks, and he said, we've got to talk more about this 40% reduction in the number of shootings year to year. Mm -hmm. but why mm -hmm. is, not why is he asking, why are we seeing that drop? Why are we seeing that drop? I think, I think it really comes back to that, uh, that multi-sector approach to addressing issues. We, we discussed the, uh, the efforts that the police have taken on with the laser initiative and uh, going into the different communities and identif identifying those that are most high risk um, and that have active warrants and taking them off of the street. Uh, it's also the, the efforts of the grassroots organizations that have been engaged in these communities for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's the efforts of the violence interrupters as well. Their, their work is so quiet that I think sometimes it goes unnoticed, but you know, nearly every time someone's home gets shot up, nearly every time someone uh, is shot, there's a, there's a phone call to a phone call to a conversation. Um, and these things are all happening. And then you also have the $2 million per year that are put into youth programming, uh, either during the school year or during the summer months. So it's really, it's a, it's a combination of efforts that you know, kind of have that amplifying effect to, to reduce these sorts of issues. Before we go to our first break, is Toledo, a bad city is Toledo mm. in a bad situation, or is it in a better situation? I, I mean, I was born and raised here. I love this city. Uh, I could never call it a bad city, right? Um, and the efforts are working, and the efforts are going to continue to be difficult, and there will be things that wax and wane. Uh, I was born and raised on Pinewood Avenue in the late 80s, early 90s, right? That was a very particular time when it came to violence in mm. Toledo, um, but that changed. Right? And I believe that we can always change again. We can always do the work to, to, to really address issues at the scale they exist. When we come back, I want to talk about the work with Cities United, uh, as we've talked about that over the last few weeks and months. Also, you mentioned Boston University. There's yep. some intriguing stuff that uh, Malcolm wants to share about the technology yep. and some of the information they're getting and how it's helping things bring down those numbers. We'll be right back on Leading Edge. You're watching here on WTOL. Welcome back here on Leading Edge. Malcolm Cunningham joining me. He's the new director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety, Engagement and Safety. Excuse me, wanted to get that correct there. Uh, Malcolm, over the last few weeks, um, obviously you've been able to take kind of a 30,000 foot view mm -hmm. of things that work, things that need redirection. Mm -hmm. I want to get into the Boston University specifics, some of the technology there. But before that, mm -hmm. we mentioned violence interrupters. We've yep. done the stories. We've talked to some of the individuals. Yep. Uh, are they hitting a wall, or are they starting to see communication being developed? Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't think that they're hitting a wall. I think uh, the, the field of violence interruption, I would say, is... Um, in its earliest stages, you know, it's kind of similar to where community health workers or, you know, peer supports were 15 years ago, right? So it's really, right now, it's in the process of becoming more standardized across the country. Uh, and I think in some ways, the, the barriers are related to that, right? So once we have that nice, clean and clear implementation model mm. that has these different things that are adaptable for different communities like a Toledo versus a Baton Rouge, um, we can really strengthen the, the support of that program long term. So SOC, they're, they're doing a great job. They're continuing to do a great job. It's the earliest stages of community violence interruption, and I think SOC is in some ways experiencing those growing pains. Former mayors, some city council members, they don't want to see money going to the Cities United group that is coming in from the outside, mm -hmm. making decisions, talking about mm -hmm. suggestions. Mm -hmm. They say there are other already boots on the ground organizations in Toledo doing the work. Mm -hmm. Your response? Cities United is not an implementation partner. They are a thought advisor. They are connected to a network of professionals that have been doing this work across the country for quite some time. So I mentioned we're in the early stages. They've seen the early stages. They've seen that process. 
um, in violence interruption, but also in hospital-based violence interventions, also in uh, public safety funding models for those grassroots organizations long term. So really, they're here to provide that technical assistance, to provide that support. They're a technical assistance provider. They're not implementing a program. Yeah. Let's go to Boston University. Okay. Um, speak specifically to what kind of information, what help you're getting from that mm -hmm. uh, educational institution regarding our safety here in Toledo. Yeah, absolutely. So Boston University's uh, School of Public Health, they have a lab uh, called the RISE Lab, um, and it's really focused on addressing gun violence, addressing uh, community violence at scale through innovative approaches that are looking at things such as the built environment, such as uh, tree canopy, such, such as uh, blight, things of that nature. So um, Jonathan Jay, the director of Boston U's RISE Lab, has been working with us along with research scientist Emma Goss um, to And this isn't with, new. This is something this you've is, been in contact with him f for months and months, right? For years at this for point. For years. For years at this point. point. When Juwan was first on board, that was actually our initial uh, conversation around how we could potentially connect. So um, they connected with the land bank um, and they connected with us and they also have um, had access to Toledo police data and they're using high resolution satellite imagery and the parcel condition survey from the land bank and gun, uh, and, excuse me, and shootings along with all other sorts of data um, and dumping it into a machine learning algorithm that they've developed and using it to identify really high resolution 300 by 300 square foot areas that are most at risk. So really- Are they uh, predicting or forecasting shootings for s the city? They, I'm, I'm always wary of saying predicting. Uh, they, they can forecast um, with some level of, of accuracy that is more accurate than a hot spotting approach, which I think is kind of a, kind of a uh, historical example of how to address issues, right? So um, they took a look at the data from 2015, excuse me, through 2020, mm -hmm. um, and they did this in 2022, after 2021 had already passed. So um, they trained it with those initial five years to see if they could accurately identify where the shootings in 2021 occurred. Um, the top 5% of those areas that they identified were responsible for one out of four shootings uh, in the city of Toledo. No right. kidding. Yep. So pretty, pretty darn pretty, close. Pretty accurate. Yeah. And, and the benefit of it is that they are focused on addressing the built environment, right? So um, reducing blight, uh, cutting the grass, uh, putting up green spaces, engaging with community is a way to actually reduce risk. It's been shown in yeah. nearly every city across the country, whether it's Philadelphia, whether it's Detroit, whether it's Toledo. Um, is it's Toledo been shown. paying Boston University for this no. technology or no. we're just kind of utilizing it? Yep, they are a research partner and we were able to fund them through um, some of the work that I was doing at ProMedica when I was there. Because, and I'll, and I'll wrap with this, because we don't understand the job, we don't, mm. uh, we don't carry this weight on our shoulders, mm. your feelings when you come into the office the very next day after there has been a homicide, mm. after there has been a shooting, because we have talked about that here. It was a tough job for Juwan. It was a tough job for David. It was a tough job for everybody who has yeah. taken this upon themselves. Yeah. How do you get by each day? Do you feel like you're responsible in some way? Um, yeah, you know, I, I've been, I've been experiencing community gun violence. I've lost friends. Uh, I mentioned, you know, uh, our, our quarterback, our freshman right. year yeah. um, for much of my life. Um, and everyone is difficult. Uh, I mean, honestly, everyone is just really challenging. Um, but I know that I wake up um, and I, I, I do, I do. And I go to bed thinking about this issue. I wake up thinking about this issue. Um, and that's been the case for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm in the position, along with the skills and the resources and the support of the community, of uh, Cities United, of hopefully the former mayors, um, knowing that there are people that are dedicated to doing this work. I'll tell you what, we love having people on this show that have pride and passion for our city and for our region. And Malcolm, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll right. be right back. Stay with us here on Leading Edge. Once again, welcome back to Leading Edge. I'm your host, Jeff Smith. There are those who say and those who do, and today we've invited a man who talks the talk and walks the walk. Toledo City Councilman John Hobbs III 
Taking the initiative weeks ago to establish a connection with the people of Toledo to be a listening ear at town hall meetings. And he joins us now here in studio. John, good to see you. Thanks for being here today. Good to be with a fellow friend. Yes, that's right. We do have the St. Francis connection. Our other connection, obviously, a love for this city and seeing it thrive, being hopeful for our town. And you and I have had conversations. There has been despair. There has been anger. Um, there has been frustration over the last few years as far as violence on the streets. And Malcolm Cunningham, he's been tasked with something that is it a no win job because you can't control it. You can't stop it. You can only help, right? Well, uh, you know, Malcolm is an extremely intelligent man. He has a great background and he's going to work um, from his end of it. What I appreciate um, Jeff, is that there is no one attack. Mm -hmm. There's no one way that's going to solve the issue we're dealing with. But what I appreciate are those that are willing to not only talk or, you know, talk about it, but are also willing to be about it. And so to put yourself on the front line, this is why I have, um, we started in February having town halls mm -hmm. and we're going out to the community and, you know, the community, uh, Jeff, many times understands that uh, we may not have all the answer, but knowing that you're willing to listen to right. them, to hear their hurts, to hear their pains, to hear their brokenness, to hear mothers that have lost sons to senseless violence, um, that you are willing to sometimes even you say... You get those individuals attending these all meetings. All the time. All the time. What, they what are there. brings them there? Uh, they're coming because they're seeing me as a person who is not only sitting down in council or on the dais, but is actually out in the community, mm -hmm. a part of the grind. Mm -hmm. That's how I grew up, Jeff. My parents raised me to don't see something needs to be done and ask somebody else to do it. If you see a piece of paper on the floor, don't ask who put it there or who's going to pick it up. You pick it up. Yeah. And so to get out, and there was such a cry of, we're not hearing from our leaders. We're not hearing from our council. We're not hearing from the administration. And so I wanted to actually get out. And it's been such a great experience um, to actually listen to the hurts, the pains, to the, the victories, to the wins, to uh, those that understand that we really do care and we're trying. And so uh, Chief Trinley, uh, we heard, one of the things we constantly heard Jeff was that we needed to have our officers back in the community, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. You know that there's been a shortage of, of officers who, um, because of the shortage of numbers of police officers all over the United States of right. America, there were certain things we weren't able to do. We had a situation here in Toledo where you yeah. had one officer to a car. That yes. was it because yes. the numbers just weren't there for a long time. But Chief Trinley, uh, in speaking to him, and hearing from the community that they wanted officers back in the community. And so now we have officers that are riding their bikes that whole shift in the community. Not only that, we have officers that are walking the beat again yeah. in the community. And two of our areas where our numbers are higher for crime, those officers are in the community. They are walking the beat. They're shaking the hands. They're meeting the kids. They're meeting the parents. And, and, and this is huge because, again, we want our young people to understand from a very early age. Uh, we had I went to St. Teresa's and at least four times a year there was an officer that came out to the school, spoke to us, showed us film, handed us pins, magnets. Uh, I grew up on Fireman Freddy with the with the fire fires. And so when our children can identify as early as possible that the police are their friends, that the police are someone that they can turn to in a time of trouble, it creates a trust in the community. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for Chief Trinley and putting our officers, and they volunteered. Yeah. He, had a, he didn't have to ask. We they had, volunteered to be out walking the beat and be in the community, Let Jeff. me ask you, we've got a couple of minutes left, but why aren't there, and I don't want you to answer for the rest of your council members. I know, I know everybody is their own man, their own woman, but why aren't there all of you all of you doing town hall meetings like well, you. You know, again, Jeff, everybody has their own niche. Everybody has their own way of addressing the issues that we're dealing with in violence. 
And so with me, I grew up in a community where we sat on the front porch, where we waved and talked to the neighbors. I am a, a, a second generation pastor. I'm a third generation barber, so I can talk. I love getting out. I love uh, uh, being a part of uh, the community. I love shaking hands. I love speaking to people. And so, th you know, that's a niche that I enjoy. Yeah. And so because of that, it's given me the opportunity to actually, I've had moms that I've held and they've cried on my shoulder about the hurt and pain. But in that, even though Jeff, they're suffering, they say, I don't want this Councilman Hobbs to happen to another parent. I don't want another family to go to this. Help us, what can we do to stop this? Help us reach out. And so the $2 million that council allocated, here's how we all got together. We allocated $2 million to where our young people are being in a safer environment by being uh, exposed to programming all summer long. There's everything a child could think of. And if we can get our children involved in this even more and find a way to create monies, incomes, grants that will carry it on beyond the summer, we're creating a safer environment. And this way, all of our council members are participating. We got 30 seconds. Are you hopeful for the direction that the mayor is taking this attack. Right? I am hopeful for any direction that will save the lives of our young people that are senselessly dying. I heard a stat the other day that, that talked about how many young people are dying all over our country. Mm -hmm. So any effort by gun violence, by, yes. by gun violence, any effort that anybody will put forth that can curb this violence, I'm celebrating. John Hobbs III, great, great words. We appreciate you being here. Good to Thank see you, you as always. Thank we'll you. be back right after this. Leading Edge, the place where we let the sound bites breathe. Join us next week.